Praise the Lord, everyone. I am going to jump right in and get started. I don't want to prolong the time, but I do want to share what the Lord is saying on tonight. Let me see here. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know if you all can hear me, but I want to jump right in and get started. I wanted to share what the Lord is saying on tonight. I am excited about this word from the Lord. So I am going to jump right in. I do not want to prolong the time. I am going to get started. Um, one thing I want to open up with prayer. Father, we do thank you on tonight for every listener. Dear God, we thank you for everyone that has tuned in. Father, I ask right now that you would take control over the airways. Dear God, I ask right now that you would move by your power and by your might. Dear God, I ask right now that you would go inside every household, oh God, and do a supernatural work on tonight, dear God. You know what they stand in need of. You know their heart's desires, oh God. I ask, oh God, that on tonight that you honor their request, dear God, simply because they tune in to hear what it is that the Spirit of the Lord is going to say unto the church on tonight, dear God. So right now, God, I ask you in the name of Jesus that every prayer that has went up, oh God, every prayer that has been prayed on this year up until this point, oh God, I ask right now that you look inside the prayer, oh God, and that you move in a special way, oh God. There's some things that, that these listeners have on the table, God, and they need you to show yourself to be God in. God, they need you to walk through the situation. God, they need your anointing to, to show forth, dear God. They need you to throw your weight around in the situation, oh God. There are listeners on tonight, oh God, that have prayed some prayers, oh God, in the beginning of this year, and now they're saying that we're almost to the end, and they're still waiting on you, God. God, I ask by your power, by your might on tonight, dear God, as I release this word into the atmosphere, that you prove yourself to them, oh God. You said in the book of Malachi that we could prove you now here with, saith the Lord of hosts. If you will not pour us out of blessing from the windows of heaven, that we don't have room enough to receive. And God, now we're in a season of possessing the land. Now we're in a season, oh God, where we're ready to prove you, God. We're ready to stand on your word, oh God. We're ready to watch you do only that which you can. Oh God, we understand now, dear God, that salvation is conducive for a miracle. Our situation is worthy of your of your hand. Our situation is a move from you, oh God. Right now, God, we understand, oh God, that some of us are in a situation, oh God, that if you don't do it, it can't be done. Oh God, so right now our back is not up against the wall. Our back is up against you, oh God. And we know that you have our back, our front, and our side, God. So God, now I ask for every listener that you do only that which you can do. Show yourself to be God. Oh God, right now we need the I am that I am to show up in these situations, oh God. We understand that we are at the last quarter of the year, oh God, but we know that your timing is not our timing, God. So we ask right now, God, that you do only that which you can do. And we stand ready for a move from you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And we count it as done. We're praising you in advance. We're standing back watching to see your hand work, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, so let's jump right in. I am excited about this word that the Lord gave me. I was a little nervous because he um, gave me a word, then he switched the word, then he combine the words. I'm like, God, I don't even know what you're doing tonight. And then my, my day got so hectic. I started because today was the first day of school so for, for my students. So the day got so hectic. The day got so long. Then I didn't get home to after five. And I was like, my God, I'm going to have to cancel. And then the Lord said, no, we're not going to cancel. You're going to go with me on tonight. Amen. So I am excited about this word that he has given me. I am trying to see if my iPad here is going to load up or what's going on. Let me see here. So the, the word that the Lord had given me was he began to talk to me this morning as I was driving because he had already told me he wanted to me to talk about vision. And I said, OK, God, so we're going to talk about vision. So the Lord began to tell me about in the beginning of the year, he said, everybody 
was all saying that this was the year of vision. This was the year of 2020, or some said 2018 because 2020 is not really perfect vision. So God began to tell me, he said, remind my sons, remind my daughters that I didn't forget what I said. Here we go. He said, I did not forget what I told you in 2020. When 2020 came in, you were jumping, you were shouting, you were, you were claiming the victory, and you were so happy in God because we were entering into a, ne a new decade. We were entering into a new season. Everybody was saying that their vision is clear, that their vision, that they could clearly now because the Lord is showing them. But then things happen. My God, here we go. Then things happen. We're going to go ahead and say um, that then coronavirus hit or COVID hit. And everybody said, oh, this is about to be a bad year. But God said, I know the end from the beginning. I know what's going to happen before it happened. Nothing catches me off guard because I am God. Nothing catches me off guard. He said, so why is it that people think, he said, some of my sons and my daughters think that because things happen in the world that that changed what I said. Here we go. This did not change what I said. He said, this didn't change what I said. This didn't change what I was going to do. He said, in fact, my ability to move on your behalf is not on the line. That's not a question. He said, what is on the line is your faith. He said, understand this because I am God and I am not like man. I cannot lie. If I said a thing, it shall surely come to pass. He said, my plans and my purposes shall prevail. He said, many of the listeners, he said, daughter, I'm going to tell you before you get started. They already know all the scriptures you're about to quote. They know I'm left and right. They've been quoting them, but they still asking me, why has it not happened yet? He said, why? He said, many of you are questioning that I know God said this. I heard it. I know he said it. He said, but you're wondering why I haven't done it. Here we go. Here we go. He said, you're wondering why I haven't done it. Watch this. God says it's time for his children to tune into what heaven is saying and only hear and see accurately by guarding, here we go, your ears, your mouth, and your eye gates. Those are your gates. Those are some of your gates. The way the enemy get in, the way he works is through your gates. When your gates are open, he's open to walk right in. Okay, I'm, that's a whole, whole nother, a whole nother episode. All right, I'll, I'll talk about the gates later. But he said, um, you got to accurately guard your ears and mouth and eye gates of your soul and spirit by processing and filtering out excessive baggage, which has nothing to do with the things of God. He said, some of this stuff you're dealing with and you're seeing with your eyes and you're hearing with your ears and you're speaking out of your mouth has nothing to do with me or what I told you. Here we go. He said, this has nothing to do with me or what I told you. As, and God warns in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be alert, be sober-minded, for your enemy the devil prowls around like a warring lion, looking for someone to devour. How does he do this? When our, eye, when our gates are left open, here we go. When our gates are left open, when we're looking at things we shouldn't look at, when, when, when we focus on things we shouldn't be focused at, because what happened in 2020, we were in church, many of us shouting and turning and spinning and speaking in tongues and spitting and blowing bubbles. And we were believing God, everything that he said he was going to do. And we were so sure we sold on it. We, we, we ran on it. We turned on it, all those things. And we were sure that God was going to do what he said. But what happened? The virus hit. The president was acting a monkey. And our vision started getting off of what God said. And we started looking to what the enemy was saying or what was going on in the world. And we took our eyes off the vision. Watch this. And, and, and we allowed people and things to speak in our ear and get us off of what God showed us. Right. Watch this. Watch this. Matthew 6 and 22. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body is full of light. What we allow our eyes to focus on is important. In Matthew 5 and 29, if your right eye causes you to stumble, you need to pluck it out and throw it away. Oh, my God. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into hell. What is, what is he saying here? 
what you set your focus on, what you are looking at, what you are focused on can get your whole life out of alignment. Oh my God, oh my God. So when we're focused on the wrong thing, because we, we forgot the vision, we forgot how God said he was gonna take us into Canaan. We forgot about all that. And we started looking at what the enemy was doing, what the enemy was saying, what the world was saying. Your family was telling you, no, that can't be done. That God, God, that God couldn't have showed you that. You started listening and focusing on what they were saying and, you, and your whole walk got out of alignment, got out of alignment. As long as you were focused on what God was saying, you was bucking and shouting and sowing and believing God, and you were doing all the things of God, you, you, you was working towards the goal, but something got you all focused. And when that thing got you all focused, you could no longer focus on what God was saying. So you lost sight of the vision. Oh, here we go. You lost sight of the vision. So watch this. Luke 11 says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when they are unhealthy, your whole body is full of darkness. What is God saying here? When I showed you the vision in 2020, when I showed you all these things that I was going to do, he said, number one, understand this. I am not like man. I cannot lie. Huh, here we go. God says, if I spoke it, it shall surely come to pass. He said, if I said it, it has to happen. He says, I'm not like man. I cannot lie. But understand this thing. Whenever God tells you he's going to do something, whenever God gives you a prophetic word, it is always conditional. Here we go. Because some people want to name it and claim it. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to do something. You can't just say, God, go give me a million dollar house and just sit back and wait on it. And just wait for this house to drop out the sky. No, that's not how it works. God, give, there is conditions to everything that God says, and we have to hold up our end of the bargain. So if God speaks a prophetic word in your life, your job is to hold on to the prophecy. How do I hold on to the prophecy? Uh, number one, you always sow when God speaks a word. Number two, when God gives you a prophetic word, you got to dig that word out, study it. God said he was going to do it. God told me he was going to get a house, going to give me a home. So I'm not going to just sit and wait. For the house to drop out the sky. I'm going to start aligning my credit. I'm going to start putting money to the side. The first thing I'm going to do after I sow is I'm buying boxes. That's how I work. I go buy boxes and I start packing up. Why? Because God cannot lie. And I'm showing God that I believe what you said. I believe what you said. And I know you cannot lie. I know if you spoke it, it shall surely come to pass. You said heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall forever stand. So when God speaks a word, a prophetic word, you go get your Bible and you find every scripture to back that thing up. I teach my mentees. I said, okay, if God gives me a prophetic word for you, your job, number one, is to go get you a pack of sticky notes, number one. Number two, go search the Bible out and find every single scripture that line up on what God said. Put it all over your mirror. So every morning when you go in that bathroom, God, you said this. God, you said this. God, and you go around the whole mirror and you just your daily declaration. Why? Because I'm standing on the word of God and I'm reminding him of what he said. My God, here we go. But we forget the vision. We forget the vision. We forget the vision. And what we do is we start listening to what the enemy is saying. We start listening to him more than we listen to God. And when his voice drowns out, God, we have a problem. Watch this. So God says he wants our full attention in these last days, in this last quarter. He says, why? Because he is preparing his people and he's not only preparing you, but he is giving you divine instructions on your next move. Watch this, because when they were in Egypt, here we go again. When they were in Egypt, they listened to Moses' instructions. Then they grumbled. Then they complained. And so they did not get to go to Canaan. Watch this. They didn't go, but their offspring went. Oh, the offspring went and Joseph and Caleb went. Watch this. When they got to Canaan, they never looked back. Why? Because Canaan was the land of milk and honey. Canaan was the land of promise. Canaan was where the grapes were so big, it took two to three men to carry them. 
Canaan was the, the land of plenty, the land of more than enough. But watch this, when they get, when you, once you get to Canaan, you don't look back. Oh my God, here we go, here we go, here we go. So God says, it is time for us to take a stand with ourselves. We should get into the presence of God and only allow the gateways to our eyes, ears, and mouth to be open and so that he can freely reveal his will and his wisdom and his knowledge to us. Watch this. Having vision, having vision means we have a clear sense of purpose. It means we have a much larger picture of what is to come, of our business, of our life, than simply setting this. When you have vision, let, let, me, let, me, let me help y'all. Vision is like this. You set a goal. You know how we do. We have those um, vision board parties. That's what everybody doing. And you set a goal of a house. And you set a goal of a car and a husband and a dog and the white picket fence. Those are goals. Watch this. Vision, on the other hand, vision means you have a clear sense of purpose. It's the buying thing. This is vision. It means you have a bigger picture of what the outcome is going to be. It's bigger than you simply setting and reaching goals and tackling problems as they come along. Visions are driven by passion. Oh, my God. Visions are, dri are driven by your dreams. Vision is the thing that's on the inside of you that comes out and you say, God, I want it. I want it. Now, when you set goals, you set goals. Are they obtainable? Here we go. Here we go. Come on, Holy Spirit. When I set a goal, I'm setting it because, yes, I can get a doctorate degree. I can do that because I'm pretty smart. My mom is smart. My dad is smart. I'm pretty smart. I can get a doctorate degree. That's a goal. That's not a vision. A vision, on the other hand, is when God superimposes his will into your will. That's vision. It's more than me just saying, I can do it. It's obtainable. Vision is, this thing is so big, it don't even make sense to me. I don't even know how I'm going to do this. But I believe God. Now we have vision. That is vision. Vision is, it's going to take me and it's going to take the hand of God. Vision is, if God don't do it, it ain't going to happen. That's vision. Now, a goal is, if I go to work every day and I save my money and I set aside a certain amount, by the end of the year, I can obtain what I want. Vision is, I want to buy the whole block of houses. I don't know how I'm going to get it, but God just dropped something in my spirit. See, vision is this. When his will meets your will and they combine. And when they combine, it only makes sense to man. Because watch this. If you can write it down on paper, if you can make it make sense, it's not a miracle. Miracles happen when all doors are shut. It's going to take God. It's going to take God saying, Tracy, to the right person. Who's Tracy? Then here you come, walking in the office. Good morning. And you tell them your name, Trace, and they look like, wait a minute, I know you. They don't know you. God just spoke your name. The story in the Bible when, 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 when the man was um, going out, I can't think of his name, and his name was mentioned to them before he even got there. They knew who he was. I've met people all the time, and they'll say, I know you from someone. I'm looking like, you don't even know me. And then they just bless my life. My daughter, it happened all the time. My daughter will tell you, just walk up and just bless my life. You ain't, you don't know me, but God whispered my name. You think you know me. You don't know me. I came up in your spirit before. That is when God, when, when God works in a situation and he brings your name before great men and they'll say, it's just something about you. I ain't never met you before, but it's just something like I've met people. And, and to be honest, I'm really not a people person. I'm, I'm kind of like, and, and I've met people before and we just, and I'm like, it's like I've been knowing you all my life. Now, for me, that's rare. That's really, really rare. But I will meet people and I'll be like, I seem like I know you, but I've met you before. No, that's just God, his will meeting up my, his will meeting up with my will. And me and that person will connect and we'll act, it'll be like we've been knowing each other for years. Just met him. Just met him. And when I meet people like that, it's like divinely orchestrated and they stay a part of my life. 
and we mentor each other and we minister to each other. Those are the things that when vision starts lining up, vision has a lot to do with God's will superimposing your will and then it coming to pass. But you have to hold up your end of the bargain. Watch this. Here we go. Here we go. And I love this statement right here um, the, the, by Helen Keller. She said, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight, no vision. Do you understand how powerful that is? She said, having sight and no vision is worse than being blind. You might, if you have no vision, you might as well be walking around blind. You might as well be walking around blind if you don't have vision. Because you have eyes and you still can't see. Oh, my God. My God. You do not need to use your eyes in order to have vision. This is an interesting quote from a blind person about the difference between having sight and no vision. My God. Now, here we go. I can't talk about vision without talking about Habeka. So Habeka 2, 1 through 4. What, what's God going to say to my questions? I'm, and this is the message Bible. Y'all know I got to go there. I'm braced for the worst. I'll climb to the lookout tower and scan the horizon. I'll wait to see what God has to say or how he will answer my complaint. And then God answered. He said, write this. Write what you see. Write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. Oh, here we go. So it can be read on the run. Oh, this is good. The, the, this vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can't hardly wait. And it doesn't lie. Oh, my God. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on the way. It will come right on time. Look at that man bloated by self-importance full of himself, but his soul is empty. But the person in right standing before God through loyal and steady believing is fully alive. He's really alive. What, what this, so you guys know the other terminology, write the vision, make it, make it plain, though it tarry, wait for it, and it shall surely come. But the message Bible breaks it down even further. It says, write it in big letters. Oh, my God. He says, write it in big letters. Even if you're on the run, you in a hurry, you you get life gets hectic, life gets stressful, you may be going through, but this vision is in big block letters. So even when hell break loose, you can still read the vision. Woo, here we go. Here we go. Now, this is what the commentary says. It says in this chapter, we have an answer expected by the prophet Habakkuk, and God answers him, and Habakkuk is complaining because of the violence and the victories of the place that he's in. The answer is number one, that after God has served his own purposes, has tried the faith and patience of the people and distinguished, here we go. Y'all wonder why the vision ain't came to pass that he told you in 2020? Here we go. I'm gonna read it again. The answer is that after God has served his own purposes, has tried the faith and patience of the people and distinguished between the hypocrites and the sincere, he will reckon with you. Oh, here we go. And we will humble and bring down not only those that are prideful because of their thirst after power, but he will make the vision come to pass. What is God saying? You're asking me, why is it? That I have prayed, fasted, sold, and on all this stuff that you told me in 2020, and I don't have it yet, and the year is about to end. God says, first of all, I ain't got nothing to do with the timing of man. Understand this. He says, second of all, after my purpose is served, remember God going to get the glory. Watch this. He's going to get the glory. He says, after my purpose is served, he said, and I have tried your faith. Here we go. Here we go. He said, where, where are you at with this? You asked me for it. He said, because my ability to, to provide is never up for question. God says, don't you ever question my ability because I am God. I still part red seas. 
I still raised the dead. I still healed the sick. He said, my blood is just as potent as it was on that cross. He said, don't ever question my ability. He said, questioning his ability is what kept them in the wilderness for 40 years. He said, so don't ever make this mistake of questioning if I can. You insult my intelligence. Okay, here we, I hear you, God. Okay, here we go. He said, but understand this. He says, my ability is not on the line. Your faith is always on the line. He says, so before I do anything, I'm going to check your faith. Where your faith at? Where your faith at? He said, because I can give it to you like that. He said, I want to check your faith. Watch this. He said, so after I have served my purpose, I have tried, have tried your faith and your patience and distinguished, here we go, between the hypocrite and the sincere. God will not be pimp. I don't know who that's for. God says, you're not going to come to me asking me for something. And then when I give it to you, you turn on me. He said, not in this season. No, no. He said, so I got to discern who's really on the Lord's side and who's just out for my hand. Who's seeking my, who, who's going to still serve me after I give it to you? He said, because in this season, I don't have time for that. He said, a lot of these sins, I ain't winking at no more. He said, I'm not winking at him no more. He said, so this is the thing. He says, As you're asking me for things. He said, and some of them, y'all think they big. God said this a little to him. He said, but anyway, he said, you're asking me for things and I can surely provide it. He said, but first I got to distinguish if you're on my side. He said, first I got to distinguish if you're going to still be with me after I bless you with this thing. Understand this because he's in the business now of giving abundant blessings. In this season, he ain't giving no little itty bitty blessings. No, no, no. He said, you can get that yourself. He said, I'm in the season of proving that I'm God. He said, I'm in the season of giving the abundant blessing. He says, all this little stuff, y'all can get that on your own. He said, ask me for the big thing. So I don't know who this is for now. He said, but all that stuff that you were shouting and bucking and falling out over in 2020, you need to go find it. He said, go get the journal. You wrote it down. He said, pick it up and get back on and set your eyes back on the vision. He said, we, 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 he said, you, you, you have him in a time box of you got, it's November 2nd now, God, you got all the way to the end. He said, I got to whenever. First of all, he said, let's understand that. He said, because if you pick, God is like this, you can pick up the vision tonight that you wrote in January and look at it and say, God, I believe you are the God that you cannot lie. If you said it, it shall surely come to pass. You said, write the vision and make it plain. And you said, though it tarry to wait for it. God, I've been waiting and I'm waiting on your hand, God. I'm waiting on you to show yourself strong. I'm waiting on you to throw your weight around. I'm waiting on you to be the God of Jacob. And I'm waiting on you, God, to do all these things for me. So now, God, I call you to the table, God. You said you're a man, you cannot lie. You said you never seen the righteous forsaken nor your seed begging bread. God, you said your purpose and your plan shall prevail. So oh God, I need to see you move now. Prove yourself. And he can move. He said, okay, I, I heard you. I got you. Wake up in the morning. There it is. He's that kind of God. He said, so don't box me into to December 31st. He said, don't do that. Remind me of what I said. Because remember, he said, the righteous have a right to command ye me. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So we, we can get on down to this. He said, in verse one through four, I'm back in the commentary. The prophet humbly gives his attendance upon God. I will stand upon my watch as a centennial on the walls of a city being torn down. I will look up, I will look around, and I will look within my God and watch to see what God is going to say to me. And I will listen attentively to his word, to the words of his mouth, carefully to observe the steps of how he moves that I may not lose the least hint of instruction or direction. I will watch to see what he will say to me. My God, here we go. Here we go. He says, because a lot of you are asking me for things and I'm giving you, I'm trying to give you instruction, but you're so busy in a hurry that, you, that you're missing what I'm saying. He says, so you need to get the vision. Go back, find what I said to you in January or whatever you're believing me for. He said, get it in your hand. Remind me of what I said and then shut up. Oh, my God. He said, and then shut up. Watch this, because what, what did Rebecca say? He says, I made mention, I will look up, I will look around, and I will look within. 
So when God gives you a word, you got to study that thing out. You got to study that thing out. He's giving you the word. Study the word. Scriptures to back up what he said. Remember I said that earlier. Find scriptures to back up what he said. And then after you do that, you got to sit and listen for instruction. What is God saying next? What is my next move? How do you get that? Oh, here we go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. How do we get direction? How do we get, how do we get instruction? The Holy Spirit is a teacher. do not. So this is when you tap into the gift of the Holy Spirit. So now Holy Spirit come direct me in your word. God, you said you leave me a comforter. You will not leave me confidence. You said in your word, God, he's a leader, a guider, and a teacher. So Holy Spirit come now. Give me the blueprint of how to get this vision to come to pass. Simple as that. That is your prayer. That you pray, God, give me instruction. Every day you wake up and everybody knows that this is in all of my books. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Father. I greet them every morning. Why? Because I need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me on what I'm going to do on what's my next move, right? So you, you always want to get the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he's a teacher. He's a leader. He's a guider. He's going to lead you into where you should go and what you should avoid. Why? Because I'm trying to get this vision to come to pass and I can't get off track. So I need the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me. So I tap into him every day. Yes, I pray in the spirit because that builds up my, my inner man, my spirit. But I talk to the Holy Spirit, come show me what I need to do today. Show me who I need to avoid, who I need to avoid. Show me how to keep my mouth shut. Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me into, your, into the path that God would have me to go so that I can get this vision to come to pass. My God, my God. So watch this. Even in an ordinary way, God not only speaks to us by his word, but speaks to us in our conscience, in your mind, whispering to us, this is the way, walk in it. And we must attend to the voice of God. Listen, a lot of us say, I just felt something. Told. It wasn't no something. It was the Holy Spirit. I just felt some type of way. No, you didn't feel no some type of way. The Holy Spirit told you don't, go, don't get on that highway. So you didn't get on that highway. And then you saw all them cars in that wreck. That's the same way you go every morning. But something, to, no, give him credit. It ain't no something. It's Holy Spirit. He is a teacher. He is a leader. He is a guy. He is a person. He's part of the triune. In the beginning, he was there. He didn't just show up in the New Testament. That thing, that conscious, that thing that you have that's telling you, uh-uh, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And you, I'm doing it. You overriding what the Spirit's saying. He telling you, don't do that. Don't touch it. Don't, don't answer that phone. Don't, don't do it. And you do it anyway. And then you go off. And now you left. And now you right. And the more you don't listen, the further you get from that vision that God has sitting right here. And you, you don't go there because now you just all out left field because the Holy Spirit will tell you, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't go that way. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't answer the phone. And we be saying something. It ain't no something. It's the Holy Spirit. He resides in you. He's your leader, your guide, or your teacher. Okay, let's go. So the prophet standing upon his tower on a high place, he is very cautious and attentive in order to tap into the mind of God and to receive instruction. Those that expect to hear from God must withdraw from the world and get above it. They must raise their attention and fix their thought, study the scriptures and consult God at all times and be instant in prayer and set themselves upon a tower. When I set myself upon a tower, that means I have escaped what's going on in the world. Chaos can be going on in my house. But I set myself on a tower. How do I do that? I go in my room. I shut my door. And I say, okay, God, here we go. Me and you. It's our time. I got to get above whatever I'm facing, whatever's going on in my home, whatever's going on in the city, whatever's going on in the world. I got to get on my tower. I got to get high above the situation and set my eyes like flint on what God is saying, on that vision that he gave me. Because you can't lose sight of the vision. Why? We already said in the beginning, Satan is running around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. His job is to steal the vision. That is his job. He wants to steal your vision, but you can't allow him to steal the vision. When you feel yourself getting a little off track, you got to say, mm -mm, mm -mm. I got that vision, my vision. That's why I said, when you have a vision, it is so important to write it down. 
not in a notebook. <clears throat> we beyond the journals. You can journal some stuff. But when God, God said he going to give me a house, God said he going to do this. You put that on a sticky note. That goes on a mirror because every day, God, you said you're going to do it. I don't know when, but God, I believe your word. I'm standing on it. You see it every day. Your kids see it. Every, my daughters know. When, when we were in that apartment, we had a mirror. I promise you, the mirror was about the biggest mirror I ever seen. Some, some of my mentees came to my apartment. They know the mirror was aligned with what God told me. And, and, and what, you know what? And the thing that got me, everything that God told me, the enemy would try to tell me the opposite. And I would say, oh, Satan, you're getting nervous, ain't you? I said, you're getting nervous. You, you know I'm close because you know daddy about to do this. Daddy about to do this. I don't care what it looked like. Daddy about to come through. Why? Because I'm his girl. He about to come through for me. And you're getting nervous. That's why you keep trying to whisper in my ear. That's why you keep sending these knuckleheads. I already know what you're doing. But I understand that what God told me is about to come to pass. Why? Because the more I quoted them vision, the crazier say that. And I said, oh, he's getting nervous now. So, so and you got to understand this. I don't know who this is for, but you've been praying for some things and you say it seemed like the harder I pray, the worse the situation gets. Why do you think so? Why do you think so? Because Satan knows you're getting close. And, and, and the closer you get, oh my God, I don't know who this is for, but the closer that you're getting, the, the hotter that fire is getting that Satan trying to turn up on you. But remember, God is like a refiner's fire. He controls the fire. So it won't take you out. You just got to not give up and keep holding on to the vision. Why? Because I understand that, that you're going through and you're saying, but the harder I'm praying, the worse the situation gets. The harder that I'm praying, the, the worse they act it. The harder I'm praying, they keep telling me, no. God is saying, I get daughter, son. Hold on to the vision. I'm proving a point. Hold on to the vision. I'm proving, I don't know who this is for. Hold on to the vision. I'm proving my point. As long as you can hold to the vision. What did, what did the word say? Don't get Terry, wait for it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Here we go. Here we go. Herein the prophet is, is an example to us. When we are tossed and perplexed with doubts concerning the methods of God, and we are tempted to think that it is fate or fortune or not wise, God, or not a wise God that governs the world or the church, and that he has abandoned us and canceled plans and all these things, we have to stand upon our watch, my God, against the temptation that it may not get ground on us. This is what Satan is trying to do. We must set ourselves upon the tower to see if we can discover that which will silence the temptation and calm your worries and your fears. We must go to the sanctuary of God and their labor to understand the end of things. That's Psalm 73 and 17. What is God saying? When the closer you get, my God, my God, I don't know who this is for. The closer you are getting, it seems like he ain't going to come through. He said, but I never leave nor forsake you. Satan is just on his job. Satan is doing what Satan do. He's trying to get you off track. Why? Because he's nervous. Because he's nervous. Because he knows if I can just get that person to the, the thing they believe in me for, it's a wrap. Their whole family coming out. Everybody coming out. Everybody coming up. Why? Because understand this. When you win, everybody connected to you win. Why do you think when God bless me, my daughters be shouting harder than I do? I be looking like, really? I mean, they be getting it in because they know, oh, my mama got it. It's on now. Why? Because if my mama bless, I'm blessed. If my sister bless, I'm blessed. If my mentees bless, I'm blessed. If my pastors are best, blessed, I'm blessed. So people around you understand that. So they connect to you and they understand that if you win, everybody connected to you going to win. And Satan knows that. He says, if, if I lose my grip on Kiara, I'm going to lose everybody connected to her. If, 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 if people see me bless Kiara with this five bedroom home, fully furnished, low interest rate, people blessing her left and right, then they going to start believing what kind of God Kiara serve. Huh. So I'm going so they going to start gravitating to this thing that that Kiara has. And when they gravitate to what Kiara has, not only has Satan Satan lost his grip on Kiara, he lost his grip on everybody connected to her. So you got to understand it, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. So as you get closer Satan get Satan get nervous. 
Understand this. Understand this. So here we go. Now that great important event be made known to him by a vision, care is taken to publish the, the vision and transmit it. Well, I say everybody connected to you win and transmit it to the generations to come who should see the accomplishments of it. That's why he had to write it down. Oh my God. This is the importance of writing it. You got to write it and you got to write it so people see it. So you can't write it in a book and then go put the book in a, in a drawer and never pick it up again. Uh -uh. You got to publish the vision. Woo, here we go. Here we go. You got to publish the vision. Here we go. God himself give him instructions. Here we go. God gives him instructions about writing a vision down. He said, make it plain. All right. Make the vision plain. Be specific in what you want. I want a house. No, you want five bedrooms, three bathrooms. You want a patio with a with a deck out there. You want enough room. You want um, two acres of land back there where you can put a pool. You want a three-car garage. Publish the vision. Get it? You don't just write down, I want a house. No, I'm going to be specific in what I want. In everything I ask God for, I'm going to be specific in what I want. That's why everybody said, oh, why are you going to see class? Because I was specific. I've always wanted that. Everybody told me, oh, girl, get the E. Get the E, get the E. So I got to the car lot, I looked straight at the E. And I looked at the C. They were sitting right beside each other. I said, oh, Jesus. And then I said, no. I told daddy I wanted a C class. That's why I've always said that. I want me a C class. And so that's what I went out there and I got. And that's why God gave me all of what he gave me when it comes to that car. That's why I was fully loaded. The E weapon. It had lower miles than the E. But I was looking at the E because my vision, I had got off focus that quick. That quick. Woke up that morning, wasn't even thinking about no Mercedes Benz. I went to the car lot and all these years, I've been, everybody know me, no, I said, I'm going to get me a Benz. What kind of C-class? As soon as I got out there, because I talked to two people before I went, they said, get the E. If you're going to get one, girl, you better get that E. You better get that E. Got out there, look, they sit right beside each other. Remember, they told me I'd get anything on the lot. They sitting right, see how Satan worked? Sitting right beside each other. Same color. Boy, they were pretty. Same color. I looked at that E. I said, oh, Jesus, don't drive it. Holy Spirit said, don't you get in that car? What are you asking for? Remember I said the Holy Spirit is a teacher, a leader, and a guider? I said, God, the Holy Spirit said, you, you never asked God for a seat. You're listening to people. I said, okay, Father, here we go. So I got in the C. I got in the C class. Didn't know, drove it, drove two of them, came back, and they said, we're going to make your payments for you until February. I wouldn't, and God said, see, that's, you better listen to me. You would have got that E, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't have got no payments. You've been make, making them payments yourself. And I was on the way out the door, and they stopped me and said, oh, by the way, letting us finance your car. We, we're going to go ahead and make your payments for you, not defer them, make them until February. Why? Because I listened to what the Holy Spirit said. I listened to what he said. I didn't get out there and, and I almost got caught up in what people were saying. My focus was getting off because God said, number one, when you woke up this morning, you ain't know nothing about you was going to get no Mercedes Benz today. I told you to go. See, this is how it worked. I wasn't, I didn't even know I was going to need a car. I was jumping and shouting because my apostle said that three people in the church going to get new cars and I'm jumping and shouting, praising God. Girl, y'all about to get y'all a car. Ooh, y'all about to get y'all a car. I'm happy for everybody else because my car paid for my car was, my Altima was paid for. I didn't want no, it ran, ran good. Never had an issue with the car. Brought it off the showroom floor. And, and so I was jumping and shouting and praising God for everybody else, not knowing I was the third one. Because everybody kept saying, well, two people been got that car. Who's the third person? I'm just like, yeah, who is it? Because apostle don't be off here. His prophecies be on a honey. He don't be off. He prophesied. My grandbaby told me it was going to be a boy. His prophecies are on the money. I said, so who getting this third car? Y'all need to go ahead and get y'all car. I'm talking mad junk. Didn't know I was the third person. Went to the car lot and all that happened. But my vision had gotten off because I listened to people telling me to get something different than what I had already told God I wanted years ago. Years ago. I said it was going to be my retirement car. I didn't know I was going to get it now. But, but God, he had, he had other plans. He had a bigger, he had an abundant blessing waiting on me. And I pay less for that than I ever paid for the Ultima. Come on, somebody. But watch this. Let me get back on, on, on point. So God, God gave him instructions for writing the vision. He said, number one, make it plain. 
He said, the people must wait for the accomplishment of the vision. The vision is yet for an appointed time. The time for the vision to come to pass is fixed. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Why, why it ain't came yet? It's a fixed time. It's in his timing when the vision gonna come to pass. Watch this. He said, the time for the vision to come to pass is fixed in the council. Oh my God, here we go. In the council and decree of God. Oh my God, I, I gotta stop right there. In, it, it is, the time is fixed in the council and the decree of God. What does that mean? To decree means to watch this. This is gonna bless y'all. To divide, to separate, and to destroy. Oh God. So when we decree, we establish whatever we say because a decree has authority behind it. You don't know, decree ain't just saying, um, I want a house. No. When you decree a thing, it is established. Remember, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Watch this. So when we decree, it is established. Whatever we are desiring at that same time, you not only establish it by the word of God. Watch this. You also separate it from anything that Satan is going to try to do against it. Oh, Lord have mercy. I got to say that again. When you do, when, when you write the vision, make it plain, and, and, it, and it, is, it comes to pass in God's appointed time, the time for the vision is fixed according to the, the counsel and the decree of God. The decree of God says it is so. And the decree of God says, and anything Satan is trying to do to block it ain't going to happen. Woo! A decree it means to divide, to separate, and to destroy. It separates it from anything that's going to hinder it. It destroys anything that's going to come up against what, it, what you're decreeing. Watch this. So this is why he says, write the vision and make it plain. Why? Because when you're making it plain, God is listening. And he said, okay, so you want a house with five bedrooms? Okay, so nothing is going to be able to hinder you from getting it. Okay, what else you want? Okay, nothing's going to be able to hinder that part. Okay, what else you want? And I'm going to counsel everything that Satan is trying to do to come up against what, you, what my daughter and my son is praying. That is how a decree works. Authority backs your decree. That's why the Bible says when you decree a thing, it is established. Oh, my God. That means it is so. It is so. That means it's done. It's a done thing. And not only is it done, but everything that's going to try to come up against that decree is destroyed. Oh, my God. My God. So there is a point in time which may be delayed. Here we go. God said it may be delayed, but it's never denied. He said it may be delayed. What delays it? You. He said, you can delay it. He said, I'm not going to deny it. Why? Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Remember this. God cannot lie. Remember this. And whenever you decree a thing, you got to put the word of God on it. Why would I put the word of God on, on whatever I'm decreeing? Because his word can't, can't return unto him void. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall forever stay. So when I decree something, I say, God, in your word, you said you shall give me houses and land. You said you're going to give me houses that I didn't build. God, you said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. So God, I command it to come unto me now. Why, God? Because you said it and your word cannot lie. You said heaven and earth are going to pass away, but your word shall forever stay. And God, you said in your word that the righteous have a right to commend you. So God, I consider myself to be in right standing with you. So now I command you, God, to work on your word. I command your word to work on my behalf. And I decree and I declare it. And it is so. That's how you pray. And then you wait on God to do it. You wait on God. You have to put authority behind what you're asking God to do. You have to put the word on whatever you're believing God for. You can't just put no blanket statement out there like, I want a house. Be like, okay. Why? You have to be specific and you have to put his word on what you say. Your word, his word put weight on what you say. It's the natural and the supernatural combining so that God can move on your behalf. Watch this, watch this. Okay, so there's an appointed time which may be delayed but not denied. And because the time has not yet come is why it must be written. 
that it may be revealed afterwards and the event can be compared. My God. So when I write it down and it come to pass, I can say, look at what God done. And not only did God do it, and I can take that same word, find myself later when I come up against a, another trial. Or you can take that word. Why? Because when something is written, it is more, it is established. It, it, it carries more weight than you just saying it. But when you, what, watch this. When you write something down, you're going to say, tell somebody, uh-uh, it's written right here. What you talking about? That you can't argue with something that's written on paper. It's written down. What are you talking about? But I, I heard, no, I ain't heard nothing. They wrote it. That carries a different weight. Watch this. And because the time has not yet come is why it must be written, that it may be reviewed afterwards and the event compared with it. Also, remember this. God has an appointed time for his appointed work, and he will be sure to do the work when the time comes. My God, it is not for us to anticipate his appointments. Our job is to wait. Oh, my God. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. When God is ready to move on your behalf, he going to move. Because you have to understand this. He know when you need it. You think you know, but God really know. You think you need it right now. God saying you don't need it right now. You can't handle that right now. You can't handle that right now because I see what's coming down the road. You don't. I'm going to give it to you when you really need it. I'm going to give it to you when you least expect it. If I give it to you now, you're going to mess it up. You can't handle it right now. In fact, who you with, I don't want you to have it while you with them. I don't know who that's for. I'm just, I'm just going to keep moving on that one. Who you with is the reason why you don't have it. Because they will mess up what I want to do. Oh, my God. Because God says, this thing that you've been believing me for, I owe it to you and you only. It's not for you and the person that you're with. I don't know who that's for, but I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep moving. And it is great encouragement to wait with patience that though the promise be delayed, it will come at last and you will receive the abundant blessing for waiting. Understand this, the abundant blessing for waiting, for waiting. He says, when you wait, I give you the seed and an abundant thing. He said, why? Because you waited. I tried your faithfulness. I tried your patience. You passed all them tests. Say whispering in your ear. Your family telling you that girl, why you really? You waited. So for that, God says, I'm going to give you that abundant blessing. I'm going to give you that abundant blessing. Watch this. And it is with great encouragement to wait and you will receive the abundant blessing. At the end, it shall speak and not lie. We shall not be disappointed in it is what that means. For it will come at the appointed time, nor shall you be disappointed, nor shall it exceed your expect. nor shall it, it is going to exceed your expectations. When you wait for it and God do it, it always exceeds what you waited for, what you were expecting. Watch this. This is how God works. The promises may seem silent for a while, but at the end, they always speak. Um, and therefore, though it tarry longer than you expected, you must continue to wait for it because you need to be sure that it will come. It will come. It will not tarry. Why? Because God is not slack. As some count slackness. This is 2 Peter 3 and 9. Though it tarry past our time, yet it does not tarry past God's time. My God. It's not past his time. Watch this. Why does God make some people wait? I'm, I'm about to close with this because I'm over my time. Why does God make some people wait? Oh, this is good. There are some who will proud. He said, because there are some who will proudly disdain the vision, whose hearts are so lifted up that they scorn to take notice of it. If God worked for them immediately, they would thank him, but they would not give him the credit. Their hearts will be lifted up towards vanity. I did this. Honey, you see how I, work? I worked hard for this. I went and got that on my own. I ain't need nobody to help me. Those are the people that end up, you're going to wait. Or you're going to wait. You're going to wait till I humble yourself, till I humble you, and you're going to know it was me. Because I'm going to let all doors shut. It's going to be a miracle. Ain't nobody else help you but me. You're going to know this was me. So you have to wait. Watch this. He said, um, so God will put put your um, whatever you're waiting for off. And he will ship you. For, he will ship for themselves and not beholden to them. 
They think their own hands is sufficient and God's promise is, is to them as insignificant. That person's soul is therefore lifted up and is not upright. It is not right with God. So that is why he said, you're going to have to wait. I can't give it to you in that spirit. I can't give it to you like that. I won't give it to somebody that's prideful. I won't give it to somebody that thinks they're better than everybody else. I won't give it to somebody um, um, throw off on, on people and say, that's why I got it and you didn't. No, I need to give it to some, give that thing to somebody who is who is who will be blessed by it and will bless my name and would allow me to get glory for it. Watch this. God is not as and, and this is what God is saying. Those that either distrust or despise God's all sufficiency will not walk upright with him. That's Genesis 17 and what? But those who are truly good and whose hearts are upright with God will value the promise and in confidence of truth in the truth of it will keep close to God and duty in the most difficult and trying times and will then live comfortably in communion with God and depend on him and expect him to do the great and abundant thing. The just shall live by faith, by his faith, by the faith which he acts upon the word of God. This is Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, and Hebrews 10, 38. What is God saying tonight? Those things that you prayed about in 2020. He said, I haven't forgotten what I said. I need you to remember what I said. I need you to go get the journal. Go get some sticky notes. Write it down. Put it on the window, on your mirrors, somewhere where you can see it every day. That is writing the vision and making it plain. He said, make sure you're specific in what you're asking me for. He said, and understand this. I don't know who this is for. He said, some of y'all are going to get what you're believing me for before December 31st hit. He said, so don't, he said, so don't keep telling me I got to the end of the year. He said, because remember, I am God. He said, don't insult my intelligence because I move when I want to move. But I'm not going to give it to you until you can handle what I'm giving you. And so you can handle what the abundant. He said, because understand this, the things that, that I want to give you, the visions that I want to fulfill, he said, these are not small things. If they were small, you would already have. It. He said, understand this, when you are believing me, when, when, when my will has superimposed your will and the two combined, he said, that's a God thing. He said, that's a vision thing. He said, and many of you are vision carriers. He said, I need you to be vision birthers. I'm sick of you being a vision carrier. I need you to be a vision birther. It's time for you to walk the vision. What is God saying? I am not constrained to the time of man. He said, I am God. I control time. He said, if I want to, I can stop time. Understand this. He said, because I am God. He said, so understand this. It is time for the visions to come to pass. He said, some of you, we, we, we done talked about Egypt. He said, if you're going to get over into Canaan, Canaan is the promised land. He said, it's the land of milk and honey. It's the land with the grapes. Of, it's the land where they have grapes where it takes two to three men to carry them. It is the land of abundance. He said, I am trying to get these listeners over there, but I need them to grab a hold of the vision that you were jumping and shouting over when 2020 hit that you think I don't forget about. He said, I ain't forget nothing. I'm waiting on you. He said, my, my ability to move is never on the line. It's your faith. He said, you lost focus. He said, reconstruct your vision. Get back in alignment of what I said. He said, because it is time for you to become a vision birther. He said, this, he said some of the things that I want to do for some of these listeners, he said, it's so deep in you, Erica. He said, this thing is so deep in your spirit where God is showing you and you see it, you see it. He said, it's time for it to come to pass. He said, now is the season. He said, there's some things I want to do before, before the end of this year. He said, I want some of you to be walking miracles. He said, walking miracles. He said, some of you have already tapped into my healing power. He said, but this is bigger than that. He said, a walking miracle where people want to study you to figure out, how did you get healed of that? That's never happened before. How did that grow back? How did that get in place? How did this line up? Pick you, this, some of you don't understand that this thing is so much bigger, Sabrina, than you just being healed. My God. It, it's, so, it's, it's more like you being a medical mystery. They don't understand. Can we talk to you? Can we study this? And you wonder why people, a, a lot of you on here, you're wondering why people don't like you. Oh, my God. 
because they see what's on your life and they say it ain't fair. But I already told y'all favor is very fair. Some people hating on you on your job, giving you hell. They don't even know. You're like, I ain't even done nothing because they see the favor on your life. And, and the thing about it, sometimes the enemy can see more favor on our lives than we see. And so what they do, and so what they do is, is they, they start hating on you and you don't understand. You're like, I ain't even done nothing to them. You ever walk in the room and you speak, you don't nobody speak, you're looking like, did I just watch? I did not speak. And nobody speaks to you because they're jealous of what they see on their life. And the, the sad part is a lot of times we don't see because we, we're just loving God. We're just doing what we do. And people acting a plum monkey. They acting crazy. And you looking like, what happened? I ain't even done nothing. I'm just here loving God. And they just don't like you. Why? Because they see what's on your life and they can't understand it. They can't understand why, why God giving her that. Why she always talking about she blessed. Why she always talking about sowing seeds. I'm going to be talking about sowing seeds to Jesus come. Why? Because it has gotten me everything that I have. It has gotten me everything that I have. I've sown my way into places. I've sown my way into what I have today. It is not because I'm just such a great, great, great person. No, I sold my way into a lot of things. Everything I believe God for, I saw. Every, everything that, I, that I'm believing, I'm teaching my daughters this. You want so on and find a word, back it up, stand on it, put a seed in the ground. That is how we operate. But people don't like you because they see the favor of God on your life. And they sitting around wondering, well, why, well, why her and not me? I'll be honest with you all. A lot of you, it is on your job, the people see you. And it's nothing that you've done. They just can't figure you out. They just can't figure you out. I'm acting a plum monkey and she's still walking around here grinning. And she's still here. Why is she here? I'm going to be here until God get ready for me to move to another job. Smiling in your face. Good morning, team. Every morning. Grinning. Why? Because the favor of God that is on your life, people see it. Satan see it. That's why he's trying. That's why he's wreaking heaven. And he's trying to get you off focus. But his job, that is his job. That is his job. But the favor of God is very fair. He favors his own. He favors his children. He done told you the apple of his eye. He done told you he, you're his elect. You're peculiar. And when you're peculiar, everybody's not going to like you anyway. Why? Because you're not like them. You're not like the end. You're not on the end crowd. You're not doing what everybody else do. I'm, 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 I'm run to, to the beat of, a beat of a different drum. That's just me. Always been like that. I've always been for the underdog. And when you have people like that, everybody not going to like you. And so you have to get used to that because you're peculiar. You're called out. You're supposed you're not supposed to be like everybody else. Mm -mm. God said, I don't want you to be like everybody else. You're an original. I don't need you to be a copy. My God, my God, you are an original. OK, so you have to understand that. So tonight, that's all. I. That's what I have for you. I know I went off left. But anyway. Um, God just wants you to get the vision, write it down, make it plain, be specific, put them sticky notes up. I'm, I'm big on it. I have to see what God said. And then when my girls come home from college, I said, y'all see that? You see, I wrote this about two years ago. God did that. He did that. He did. And I'm showing them that God don't lie. If God said it, he going to bring it to pass. And I tell them all the time, write it down. Write it down. Y'all write down what you believe in God for. Put it up Put it up on the wall so we can see it. So we can believe God together. In my apartment, I had a house, a picture that I had saw that came in the mail and set it on the refrigerator. I wasn't looking for no house at the time. I knew eventually I was going to get one. God turned around and gave me a house with everything in that house that I saw. It just came in the mail. And I put it on there and I said, I'm just believing God for a house. So I put it where the girls could see it, where we could see it. And we tripped out because... Most of y'all know my testimony. This house was already built and somebody walked away from it. For whatever reason, they didn't want it. House, house built, um, all stainless steel appliances, everything gave it to me. The, my, my realtor friend called me. My dad was in hospice. She called me and said, it's a house. You got to see this. And so I came all the way to Gaston. You look at the house. Wasn't nothing up but the studs. I seen the inside was just like the picture on the refrigerator. Tracy, no, she saw it on my refrigerator. It was on my refrigerator at my apartment. And, and I said, um, 
And when I saw that, I said, this house looks just like that, that picture that was on the refrigerator. And my girl was like, oh my God, it sure does. But we came in the house and nothing was up but the studs. They were still building the house. They said, the only catch to this is you can't make any changes because the people, remember, houses you didn't build. Okay. So um, the house was already built. They had all the appliances, all the colors, all the color schemes. I would, I am not kidding you when I tell you, every detail of this house is what I would have picked down to the light switches. That's how God worked. That's how God worked. So when, when, when you pray, be specific. When, and, and it's important that you, when you um, write in your vision, you put it up everywhere, everywhere. My girls have always known all day life. I've been preaching for over 20 years. Don't touch my sticky notes. Don't touch my notes. They all mean something. I told them when I die, y'all better go get all my journals, split them up, and you better read them. I said, you better read them because everything God spoke to me is in those journals. And, and so I write things down, but when, I, when it's something I'm believing God for, I put it up so I can see it. And everybody that come to my house, no, don't touch nothing. She got up on these mirrors in her bedroom because they all mean something. I'm believing God for it. And then I, when, when, when they come to pass, I check them off. And I got another notebook that has all my sticky notes in it with the date. God did this. He did that. He did it. So when things get tough, what do I do? I go grab that notebook. God, you said, God, I seen you do it right here in 2018. God, I seen you do it in 2017. God, and that encourages your faith. That encourages your faith. So that's how you write the vision and you make it plain. So they that so they they read it, may run with it. Why? Because I may get in a hurry, but that vision is still plain. That vision is still written down. So to God be the glory. I have went way on my time. I actually got to jump off here and go jump on another live with um my pastor, Pastor Kenya. Um, and and those of you that want to join, I'm be, I'm having a, a watch party probably on my page. But I, we are in um, a capital campaign. You know, we're buying our buying some land for our church, and so I'm going straight to her page, and I'm a part of that live for the rest of this week. So anybody that want to join me, I will post everything up on my page. You can join me there. I think Thursday night I'll be um, speaking or praying or doing whatever she need me to do. Um, you guys know Pastor Kenya; she is is a prophetic psalmist, a, pro a prophet in her own right. Um, humble as she can be. Um, but I, I love her gifting. I love her ministry. So I'm going to jump off here and then hers, hers started at eight o'clock. But I also wanted to share because somebody got on me about this, um, not got on me about not um, sharing my material anymore. I think it was my mama actually. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure because a lot of people do so and then they're asking about the books and they said, well, you didn't say nothing about your book. So I do want to share on tonight. So this book here, um, God's Chosen, uh, if you wanted to get this book, this book right here is one that I wrote uh, while my dad was going through um, chemo and um, his cancer. And I wrote this book sitting by his bedside. And, and this book right here, um, actually, one person that read this book had been on drugs for years, got delivered. And I said, that was the, I said, if I didn't write this book for nobody but that one person, that was more than reason enough. So I have this book. Um, it, it walks you through how you are the chosen of God. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what you're going through. You're still God's chosen. And nothing can change that. Amen. So that's what this book about. And I think just about everybody have this one, um, the morning glory prayer. So if you are trying to, figure out how to pray through or get a prayer answered, this is the book that you need. It, it is loaded with prayers and scriptures and, and, and how to stand on scriptures and, and how to just apply the word of God to your prayers. Um, this is a book that you need if you are an intercessor or you're trying to learn how to pray or get to the, to the throne of God. This is the book that you need for that one. And then many of you know, this is like one of my first books um, worship and warfare. This book here is about how I birthed a ministry. I birthed, um, work, yeah, Kiara say that's her favorite. I birthed um, my ministry, my um, worship and warfare through this book. It walks you through how God birthed a ministry in you. Um, so if that, if you want that book, that this is the book that you need if you're trying to start a ministry, walk through a ministry. Um, this is the book that you need. 
And then many of you know my latest book, um, I'm trying to turn it, Try It By Fire, um, is after, it is the after effects, after you come through. Now what? So, so this is what God started revealing to me, why I took you through what I took you through, why certain people couldn't go with you, why, and then it, and it takes you through how I dealt with losing my dad and my divorce at the same time. It walks me, it'll walk you through like where I am now um, and, and how I'm maintaining because a lot of people don't know um, in three days, I celebrate uh, four years of actually being, not really being free, but my own right or learning that but when I thought my world was ending, it was really beginning. Um, so this book talks a lot about that. So any of those books, um, yeah, my mama say her favorite, love you, ma. So um, any of those books, if you um, send me a message, um, you can get them. Uh, of course, you can pay through Cash App. Some people ask me about PayPal. I do have PayPal, so I will. If you inbox me a message or text, I can get you that PayPal information as well. Um, but any anything, um, anytime you, of course, anybody that want to sew, you can. Um, I think one of my babies put the cash app up. Yeah, you can sew. I, of course, you all know that when you sew, you sewing into good ground. Um, so any seed, I accept it. I pray over it. I pray over your life, um, and and you will return. You will receive a hundredfold return. Trust me. But y'all heard the testimonies. I don't have time to go through all of them. And um, again, on tonight, I am jumping off of this live and jumping on another live that I'll be on all week with Pastor Kenya May. That is my um, apostle's wife, my friend, lover, sweet spirit, psalm, prophetic psalmist. Um, you can jump right over there if you want to join me over there. But I bless you all. I thank you. Um, and thank you for joining me. I will see you guys again next week. Please share so we can get the word of God out to the people. They need to hear what God is speaking in this season. And I love you and God bless you.